Okay, so, you know, for the longest time, it felt like we all kind of had this picture in our heads, right? Mm-hmm. When we talked about, like, AI and where this was all going, yeah. it was always, you know, America making the big, splashy breakthroughs. Right, pushing the boundaries, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then China would come along, and they'd be really good at, like, taking those ideas and, like, making them huge. It's scaling them up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, absolutely. But, like, what if that whole script just got totally flipped on its head? That is exactly the question that we are diving into today. And uh, we're looking at this Fortune article. It's from March 31st, 2025. And the title is Super Catchy, How DeepSeek Erased Silicon Valley's AI Lead and Wiped $1 trillion from U.S. markets. Wow. So it's a really it's a big story. And what it's really telling us is that there's this like major like power shift happening yeah. in the world of AI. And it's all because of this player that like almost nobody saw coming. Yeah. I mean, nobody saw coming is like a huge understatement. Right. Like we're talking about deep seek, right? They're this startup out of Hangzhou. That's right. And they weren't like your typical Silicon Valley, you know, disruptor. Right. They actually spun out of a hedge fund, which is like. That's right. High Flyer was the name of the hedge fund. Yeah. It's just wild to think about that. Yeah. That that's where this AI powerhouse is coming from. Exactly. But okay, so they launched this thing called R1 in January. Uh And it's a large language model. Yeah. Like it's like the brains behind, you know, all this fancy AI that can understand text and generate text, you know, like a super sophisticated chatbot. Yeah. And the thing is, R1. It's supposed to be, like, as good as OpenAI's O1 model. Right, which yeah. was, like, the state of the art just a few months before. Yeah, ex- exactly. It's crazy. Right? Yeah, it's like this total dark horse coming out of nowhere and just blowing past everyone. It really is. And it's not just the speed. It's the way they did it, too. Yeah. Full yeah, out. The efficiency is mind-blowing. Yeah. Like, DeepSeek said that the last training run for their older Model V3, right. it only cost them $6 million. It's a million. Which... To put that in perspective, yeah. Andrej Karpathy, you know, the AI guy who used to be at Tesla, yeah. he called that budget a joke yeah. compared to what U.S. companies are spending. Right. Like, they're throwing tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars at these projects. Like, a completely different way of thinking about it, right? Totally, yeah. Like, you don't always need to just, like, throw money at the problem. Exactly. It challenges that whole assumption yeah. that you need, like massive funding to be a leader in AI. Exactly. Like maybe there's a smarter, more efficient way. And the impact was immediate, right? Oh yeah. Like the Fortune article talks about how yeah. like big tech companies like Nvidia, Microsoft, yeah. their market value just tanked like a trillion dollars wiped out. Just because of this. Yeah. Because investors were like freaking out. Right. Like this was a big wake up call. Yeah. And even Sam Altman over at OpenAI, he was like publicly expressing concerns and talking about maybe going open source. Oh, wow. Which is interesting because DeepSeek was already doing the open source thing. So it's like they were ahead of the curve in multiple ways. Absolutely. And, you know, when something like this happens, it gets the experts talking right. Oh, yeah, totally. And like Jeffrey Ding, who's this really respected researcher. I know his work. On China's AI. He's the guy behind the China AI newsletter. Yeah. He actually admitted that like he and a lot of other people in the field, they had totally underestimated China's ability. To do this kind of thing. Yeah. To make these cutting edge breakthroughs. Yeah. So when someone like that says they were wrong. Yeah. It really shows you how big of a deal this deep seek thing is. Um, and you can imagine right over in China. Oh, yeah. Like the mood must be totally different. Total. Op- it, yeah, like celebratory. Yeah. Like the article talks about how deep seeks founder. Liang Wenfeng. Yeah, Liang Wenfeng. He ends up at this meeting with President Xi Jinping. And he's there with like Jack Ma and Ren Zhengfei. It's like the top tier of Chinese tech. Exactly. The elite. Yeah. So that right there tells you the government is like, fully behind this like this is a big deal for them and it's not just like a symbolic thing either right no it's not just talk with these big chinese companies uid the electric car company Uh uh-huh medea they make home appliances they're all using deep seek now yeah they're integrating it into their products wow so it's like this whole ecosystem is building up around deep seek. It's really impressive. And it makes you wonder, like, is this just deep seek or is this a sign of something bigger happening in China's AI scene? That's a great question. And the article actually points out that deep seek. Yeah. It's not like a one off success story. Right. Like China has this whole dynamic AI sector. OK. You've got major players like Alibaba ByteDance. Right. Those are big names. Huge companies. Yeah. yeah. They're all developing their own really competitive AI models. 
And then on top of that, you've got all these smaller companies. Okay. These like little AI dragons yeah. that are taking this like more affordable, more efficient AI. Yeah. And they're applying it to all sorts of real world stuff. Like what kind of stuff? Oh, you know, like mobile apps powered by AI. Uh huh. Like really smart AI assistants. Okay. And even robots. Wow. So okay. it's like this whole groundswell of AI activity. And are investors paying attention to all of this? Oh, yeah. Big time. Like the Hang Seng Tech Index. Right. The big one in Hong yeah. Kong. It's up like 35% this year. Wow. That's huge. Yeah. And it's companies like Alibaba, uh -huh. Kwashu. They've got this amazing text-to-video AI called Kling. Wow. And then Smek, the chip maker. Right. They're working with Huawei on AI chips. So it's like this whole resurgence in Chinese tech. Yeah, exactly. And what's really interesting yeah. is that this might be part of this bigger pattern. Okay. Like the article talks about how China has done this before. But think, what other areas? Oh, you know, things like solar panels, wind turbines, electric vehicles, right. even the batteries that go in electric vehicles, huh. drones, robotics, biotechnology. It's like a lot of cutting edge industries. Yeah, exactly. Like their strategy is they learn from what other countries are doing uh -huh. and then they get really good at making it themselves. Okay. And then they become like major global players. So it's like they're playing the long game. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure there are people who are skeptical, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. You always hear some people. Why cool? Especially like Western CEOs. Okay. And they tend to say that China's success is all about like yeah. government subsidies, stealing intellectual property. Right, right. You know, breaking the rules on export controls. Yeah. But the article kind of pushes back on that narrative. Okay, how so? It says that China's progress is actually driven by some really fundamental stuff. Like what? Like a massive and efficient manufacturing base. Right. They're known for that. Exactly. Yeah. And they're really eager to learn and adapt technologies. Yeah. They've got this huge pool of talented engineers. Uh -huh. And the government is really good at supporting them strategically. Okay. So it's not just about like cutting corners or playing dirty. Right. It's about having these long-term advantages. I see. And the article also talks about how China and the U.S., yeah. they actually have different ways of thinking about innovation. Okay, tell me more about that. So there's an economist quoted in the article, Qi Yujin, yeah. and she says that China is really focused on tailor-made problem solving, Okay. while the U.S. is more about like breakthrough system-wide thinking. So it's like a more practical versus a more theoretical approach? Exactly. And yeah. how does that play out in the real world? Well, like with DeepSeek, right? Mm -hmm. They were able to take this new AI technology yeah. and make it work really well. Uh -huh. But they also made it super cost effective. Right. And easy to produce on a large scale. So it's like they were focused on making something that would actually work for a lot of people. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So even though the original breakthrough might have happened somewhere else. Yeah. China's ability to scale it up and make it affordable. Uh-huh. That gives them a huge advantage. It's a different kind of innovation. Totally, yeah. But, you know, it's funny to think that just a couple years ago, mm -hmm. the whole story about China and AI was totally different. Oh, yeah. Like, the conventional wisdom was that they were falling behind. Yeah. And the article actually reminds us about all that stuff. Like what? Like, in 2020, Beijing started cracking down on the tech sector. Right, right. And then tech IPOs dried up. Yeah. They introduced stricter data privacy rules. Yeah, it felt like things were slowing down. Yeah, the momentum definitely stalled. And then chat GPT came along. Oh, yeah, in 2022. And it was like, whoa. Yeah, it really showed how far ahead the U.S. was. In terms of AI. Yeah, like those early Chinese large language models. Mm -hmm. They just weren't performing at the same level as chat GPT. Right. And then on top of that, the U.S. government put export controls on NVIDIA's AI chips. Right. Those are the ones everyone uses to train their AI. Exactly. So that was a big blow to Chinese companies. Yeah. It felt like they were getting hit from all sides. Yeah. It was a tough time. But then something changed, right? Yeah. According to Jeffrey Ding, the turning point was around the fall of 2024. Okay. That's when they started to see the gap closing. Between China and the U.S. Yeah, especially in the open source AI world. Oh, interesting. Like Chinese companies were getting really good at optimizing these models. What do you mean by optimizing? Like making them smaller and more efficient. Okay. So they could be trained and run with less computing power. I see. So they didn't need those fancy NVIDIA chips as much. Smart. Yeah, and this shift happened alongside this evolution in China's AI startup scene. Okay, tell me about that. 
So, like, at first you had these little dragons. Yeah. They were mostly focused on computer vision stuff. Like facial recognition? Yeah, things like that. Okay. And then came the AI tigers. Okay. They were all about generative AI. Like creating new content with AI. Exactly. Okay. And now you've got this new wave of dragons, uh -huh. and they're based in Hengzu. And DeepSeek is one of them. Yeah, DeepSeek is like the leader of the pack. So it's like each generation of startups builds on the last one. Totally, yeah. And why Hengzu? What's special about that place? Well, the article talks about how Hangzhou has become like a hub for AI innovation. Okay. And there are a few reasons for that. Okay. One is that it's far enough away from Beijing. Right. So less government interference. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But it's also close to Shanghai. Which is like the financial center of China. Yeah, exactly. So like they've got access to capital and talent. I see. And then Hangzhou itself has this really strong tech talent pool. Because of companies like Alibaba. Yeah, Alibaba and Nitiz. Right. They're both based there. So it's like this perfect breeding ground for AI startups. And Alibaba has been really interesting in all this, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, they've been super supportive of open source AI. Like how? Well, they've been releasing their own models and tools. Uh -huh. And a lot of the top performing large language models. Like the ones on Hugging Face? Yeah, exactly. Like that website where developers share AI models? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. A lot of those top models were actually trained using Alibaba's tech. Wow. So they're kind of like the unsung heroes of this whole open source AI movement. In a way, yeah. It's yeah. amazing how much they've contributed. Totally. And you know... We can't talk about China's AI progress without talking about scale yeah. and the governance role in all of this. Right. Because China's like all about scale. Right? Exactly. Like they've got this huge population. Yeah. Over a billion people. And the government is really good at coordinating things. So how does that play out in the AI world? Well, like the article talks about how Tencent. The company behind WeChat. Yeah. WeChat has over a billion users. It's like the everything app in China. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So they integrated DeepSeek's large language model into WeChat. Wow. And just like that, DeepSeek had this massive user race. Overnight. Yeah, it was instant. That's crazy. Then it shows you how the government can really accelerate things. I mean, they can just make things happen. Yeah, and it's not just Tencent. Yeah. Like, the government has been publicly praising DeepSeek. Mm -hmm. President Xi Jinping met with Liang Wenfeng. Right. So it's clear that they see AI as a national priority. And it's interesting, right, because a few years ago, mm -hmm. the U.S. was trying to slow China down in AI. Yeah, by restricting access to those NVIDIA chips. Right. And it's kind of ironic. How so? Because those restrictions might have actually helped China in the long run. Right. Yeah, like Liang Wenfeng said that money wasn't the problem. Uh -huh. It was the chip ban. Wow. And according to Kiyujin, those restrictions basically mobilized the entire nation. To develop their own chip industry. Exactly. So it's like the U.S. trying to hold them back actually made them stronger. It's a classic unintended consequence. Yeah. And now Huawei, they've got their own AI chips. We send chips. Yeah, and startups like DeepSeek are using them for AI inference. So they're not as reliant on U.S. technology anymore. Exactly. They're becoming more self-sufficient. And then there's the talent factor, too. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh -huh. Like China graduates a ton of engineers every year. Yeah, I've heard that they have like way more STEM graduates than the US. It's not even close, yeah. Wow. And the article talks about how DeepSeek specifically recruited all these young, talented engineers uh -huh. who didn't have a lot of Western training. So they're like homegrown talent. Exactly. That's really impressive. It is, yeah. And there's also been this shift in the mindset of Chinese tech founders. Okay, like how so? Well, Grace Xiao, she says that they're moving away from just copying. Uh -huh. And they're embracing open source as a philosophical choice. Oh, wow. And they're really focused on genuine innovation. So it's like they're not just trying to catch up anymore. Right, they're trying to lead. That's a big change. It is, yeah. But it's not all sunshine and roses, right? No, for sure. Like... The article also points out that China's AI sector, yeah, it still has some major challenges. Like what? Well, one big one is access to capital. Okay. Like, remember how Beijing cracked down on the tech sector a few years ago? Yeah. Well, that really spooked investors. It made it harder for startups to get funding. Exactly. And then you've got the geopolitical tensions, yeah, yeah, which yeah. are making things even worse. Those look like a double whammy. Yeah. And DeepSeek is a good example. Oh, so. Well, they had to rely on their parent hedge fund for funding. Because they couldn't get it from traditional venture capitalists. All right. And what about the Chinese stock exchanges? Well, they're not exactly known for being 
friendly to unprofitable startups. They want to see profits. Exactly. And then going public in the U.S. Yeah. It's become way more difficult. Because of all the political stuff. Yeah. So it's like Chinese AI companies are kind of stuck. Yeah. Paul Triolo, he describes the capital markets in China as underdeveloped, immature, and illiquid. Wow. That's harsh. Yeah, it's not a pretty picture. So what's the government doing about this? Well, they've announced plans to start this National Venture Capital Guidance Fund. Okay. And it's specifically for investing in hard technology. Which includes AI. Exactly. So they're recognizing the problem. Yeah, and they're trying to fix it. But it's interesting, right? Uh -huh. Because Deep Seek's story kind of shows that what? you don't always need tons of venture capital to compete globally. Exactly. Like they did it their own way. Yeah. And the government's support for open source development. Right. That seems to be a big part of their strategy. And it makes sense, right? Uh -huh. Because open source AI is more accessible to everyone. Exactly. And companies like Alibaba, they see open source as a way to build a bigger ecosystem. So everyone benefits. In theory. Yeah. But what about the U.S. market? Well, Chinese AI models might have a tough time there. Because of protectionism. Yeah, exactly. But what about the rest of the world? Well, that's where things get interesting okay. because a lot of countries, especially in the developing world, yeah, they don't have a lot of computing power or capital. Right. So deep seeks approach, right. like making AI more efficient and affordable, yeah, that can be really appealing to them. So it's like China is going after a different market. In a way. And it might actually be a much bigger market in the long run. It could be. And it's not just AI, right? Yeah, it's not. Like China has done this before. Uh-huh. With other products. Yeah. Like solar panels. Right. Electric vehicles, smartphones. They've got a track record. Yeah. They're good at making things cheap and accessible. Exactly. So maybe AI is just the next frontier. It could be. Yeah. So to sum it all up. Yeah. This whole deep seek thing. Uh-huh. It's a really big deal. It is. It's basically saying that the old story yeah. about the U.S. leading in AI and China following. Right. That's not true anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That narrative is broken. Yeah. Like China is a major force in AI now. And they're doing it their own way. Exactly. And it makes you think about all the implications, right? Rightly. Like what does this mean for the future of AI? Yeah. For global competition. Uh -huh. For the accessibility of this technology all over the world. It's a whole new landscape. Yeah. This has been a really eye-opening conversation. I hope it's made you curious to learn more. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep diving deep.